To create anything but the most basic game features in Godot, you need different nodes to communicate with each other. In the last episode, we used signals to communicate between scenes and nodes. In this episode, we'll be using references to the variables stored within other nodes to create even more advanced game features. Welcome to the sixth episode in our tutorial series on an advanced inventory system. In the last episode, we created basic functionality between our player, the detection of a loot chest, our graphical user interface, and our loot panel. However, we currently have it set up that the player can keep clicking loot when he's next to a chest, and the loot generator will just pop up more and more and more random loot, thereby creating an export for the player to get an unlimited amount of loot. Today, we're going to be fixing that by adding variable references within our code to different nodes so that we can create a memory function for our loot chest. We want our loot chest to remember, first of all, whether it has been looted before, and second of all, we want it to remember any contents that still remained after the player was done looting the chest so that they can be displayed again if the chest is reopened. These two variables we will save within our chest scene from which all our chests are generated as instant childs. Within our chest scene, we'll be copy passing two variables. First, we have a variable whether the chest is looted, which when the chest is loaded to the game will be set to false as it has not been looted before. Second, we have a variable with the contents of this, of this uh, loot chest, which we will define as an empty, empty dictionary. This dictionary will be filled when the player loots the chest for the first time and leaves anything behind. Now, in order for us to make use of these two new variables, we need the graphical user interface to know which chest is actually looted. The graphical user interface, which code is in our canvas layer, currently only receives a loot chest in range function or command from which it knows that the graphical user interface should change, but all the chests are linked to the same signal and they don't parse any information for the graphical user interface to know which of the loot chests is looted. Because the graphical user interface doesn't know which loot chest is actually in range, whether it be just one, two or three, it also cannot parse any information to our loot panel. In the end, our loot panel should decide whether it's going to be generating new loot or whether it's going to be displaying loot that was earlier found by the player. Therefore, we first have to include a variable to parse through our graphical user interface. When we are in our chest, we have a signal in loot range. We're going to be updating this signal to include a variable, in this case, chest name. Now, when we are in loot range, we're not only going to be emitting the signal in loot range, but we're going to be attaching that variable to it. Now, of course, our code gives an error because just name is a undefined variable. To define our variable, let's add the variable and let's set it to get name. This command will um, get the name of the node. Now our node is going to be defined by the chest that is being opened. Whenever the, this, this trigger is triggered, when the player hits the detection circle of the chest, that could be chest one, two, or three. These chests have different names, obviously. So whenever this code is triggered, um, the chest name will be equal to the name of the actual node. It looks like it's just gonna be chest one here, but within our map scene, the chests all have different names. Then we pass that chest name into our signal for the graphical user interface to receive. To do that, we go back to our canvas layer, where on the function on loot chest in range, we first add the variable that is being parsed so that the function actually knows it's going to receive a variable. Now, we want this chest name to then be parsed to our loop panel. But currently, this chest name is only defined within this function. So we need to lift this chest name up to the status of a node variable. In order to do that, we're going to be defining the variable chest on the top here and we say that chest is equal to the parsed chest name. Now we have a node variable that we can use in every function down here. Now we're calling our uh, loop panel down below here and we add the child. 
when we add a loop panel, we've created our loop generation system to activate as soon as the loop panel is loaded. Now, we don't want to do that anymore in the future. We want the loop panel to first determine whether the chest was already looted or not. So let's first prepare our loop panel and make a few changes to our loop generation code or the order of loop generation um, commands so that we can actually receive the signal within our loop panel. To do so, we're going to go to our loot panel. As you can see here under the ready function, it immediately starts with determining the, the amount of loot, it's going to be selecting the loot and it's going to be populating the panel. But this is going too fast for us. Now we want to put a little step in between where it verifies if this loot chest has been looted before and then do something different. So we're going to be taking this out of the ready function and create a separate function for this particular uh, part. So now when it's ready, it's only going to be defining the map name, but we're not triggering, triggering the open chest yet. We can verify this when we play the scene in that we still can approach the chest. We can still loot it, but no loot is currently being generated as the open chest function we just created is never triggered. That's going to be our first job to recreate what we had earlier, but then based on a trigger, a trigger from which we can also parse the chest name that we have defined in our chest scene. We do so by going back to our graphical user interface canvas layer. And here we will be defining a new signal. Our signal will be open chest and we're going to be parsing our variable chest that we have up here and have defined by um, copying over the chest name that came out of the collision detection. Now with our new signal, as we have added a child, it first needs to be loaded into the scene before we can parse the signal to it, or send the signal to it, I should say. We're going to emit the signal that we just created. It's going to be open chest, and we're going to be parsing that variable. So now our chest name comes out of our chest node, is going to be defined as a node variable, which then will be parsed by our loop panel. Now, of course, we have to make sure that our loop panel listens to the signal. To do so, I'll be recycling this connection node right here. And I'll be copy passing it to our loop panel with the onready function. Now we have to make a few changes, of course, to the signal. First of all, when we look at the entire map scene, we have our canvas layer. Right here, it adds a child loop panel, which will become a child of canvas layer. Therefore, we are already with our get node, we're already on the right level. Our loop panel is a child of canvas layer, so we cannot use the same get node to reference our canvas layer correctly where it needs to connect to. So we're going to be replacing get node with get parent. So instead of going down through the child, we go up to the parent. Now, we don't need to be selecting any node because every child only has one parent. We connect not the closed loop panel but the open chest signal. We connect it to self and we're going to be connecting it to the function we just created down here, which is called open chest. Now we have created exactly the same exploit that we did earlier, only now we can um, add the chest name to this function, which we'll be using later on. First, Let's have a look if everything is still working the way we want it to work. So we can loot, we can close, and we can indefinitely exploit the current mechanic. So it seems like what we had created earlier is still there, but now we have a variable chest from which we can make different considerations within the code. To start it off, let's first verify whether the chest was looted before, yes or no. Before we determine the loot count, and run the loot selector and populate our panel, we're going to be defining the current chest that's being looted. That current chest is, of course, just chest name. What we need to get the reference of this node in order to access the variables which are inside the node. So we're going to go to current chest, we're going to get the parent, and remember, we're currently in the loop panel. So if we have a look at our node uh, tree here, the loop panel will be a child of canvas layer. So the first get parent is going to be referencing the canvas layer. Then we get the parent of the canvas layer, which will be the map scene. 
and then we get the node chest and chest will be the chest name so that will be either chest one two or three which were our childs under the map scene so with this piece of code we are getting the actual reference of the node that we want to verify a variable within so if the current chest and then with a dot looted is equal to false and remember looted is one of the variables we defined on the top here currently it's false because it has not been looted yet going back to our loot panel if it's false if it has not been looted before we of course want to run the entire um, code that's going to populate and generate our loot now of course this means that when at the end of the um, loot panel we close the loot panel we need to change that looted variable within the current chest to true in order to do so again we have the issue that now we only have this variable current chest defined within our open chest functionality so instead of that we're going to be defining the current chest as a node variable so we only have to define it once we remove variable here everything will stay functional but now at the end before we emit the signal we can define that the current chest looted is equal to true when we run this piece of code to test what we just made we can approach the chest we can loot it we see we got steel boots and a steel sword we can close it but if we loot it again there's no more loot being generated of course we have not stored the steel boots and the steel sword in the dictionary to be displayed again as we haven't taken anything out of the chest but the chest knows now that it has been looted before and therefore doesn't run the item generation anymore therefore this next piece of code is working and we can work on transplanting the dictionary of loot to our loot chest so that it can remember what the contents were in order to create the memory of the chest the memory of what it actually contained we're going to be using the loot dictionary which is a product of the item generation system the loot dictionary is defined at the top of the loot panel also as a dictionary which is filled by our loot selector now as our loot panel closes we can set the current chest contents to be equal to the loot dictionary now as we close the loop panel the loop dictionary will be copied to the chest contents now back up here if the loop chest variable looted is equal to true then the loop dictionary is equal to the current chest contents and then we only run the populate panel function in other words as we copy the current chests uh, I'm very sorry the current loop dictionary when we open it the first time we copy that to the current chest as memory and then if the chest has been looted before it will then turn those contents back into the loop dictionary and only run the populate panel and the populate panel is going to be just using that loop dictionary to then fill this chest with whatever we need we can test this in real we go down to the chest we loot it we get some stuff we can loot it again and we get the same stuff also if we go to a different chest we get two steel boots we get two steel boots again and we can run back to the first chest which have also is which has its own memory and can therefore display exactly the same contents as it had before of course this contents is going to be dependable on what we took out of the chest when we looted it but that is going to be for the next episode where we finally add the items that we have been generating into our world to the original graphical user interface or the, the user interface screen of inventory that we created in that first episode finally we're going to be getting stuff in our inventory to actually play around with I know I've been teasing you guys quite a lot with when we're finally going to be filling that inventory panel we created back in episode number one, but next episode is really finally going to be happening. If you like this video, smash that like button, hit subscribe and that bell icon so you can get the next video in your mailbox. 
And as always, put your questions and your remarks down in the comments below or find me on Twitch. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday from 9 p.m. in the evening European time, but American times are down below in the description for your convenience as well. I hope to welcome you in my stream one day where we can talk about Godot, about game development, and any other questions you may have. See you next time.